Hi guys, how we doing? Welcome back to another video. So I've gone and done it, haven't I? I've spent a week doing some Electron JS JavaScript HTML and CSS programming and I've made my own HMI app. And this thing is bloody insane, man. Just like I can't believe what humans can do now in a in a week. Like I'm not a software developer at all. You know, I've been using ChatGPT and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Uh and I've just been programming and it's just been bliss i've enjoyed every moment of it so i've got a really nice fancy hmi that can do a bunch of crazy stuff and yeah it's just it's absolutely insane to me so i've got this this is looking at a siemens 1200 i've got um tier portal open here you can see i'm connected to a plc and so this is looking at uh, i've got two analog inputs that i'm reading which are both reading as zero at the moment i don't have anything connected to it i've literally just shoved some screwdrivers into into the analog input so that i can just pick up some noise occasionally so you can see what's happening there this graph for example it's an it's an open source chart js graph and uh, that i'm using this component that i'm using and it's just it's insane how simple the code is uh, i'm not going to share the back end or the 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 source code for this just because it's, it's taking me about 40 hours to do i did 20 hours of it at work and 20 hours at home and so it's like it's my company's you know they paid me basically to do it so i'm not going to share the source code but you can see I've got the connection status here. I can set my PLC IP address. So I've got that set to 192.168.0.99. Uh, so I'm connected. If I set it to 0 0.11 connect, then obviously I don't have that PLC available. So now I've gone disconnected and it's disconnected me and it's showing me that I'm disconnected. If I come back here, change that to 99, connect again. I'm now reconnected. And you can see I'm logging, I'm getting analog readings again. Uh, I'm actually, I've got an e-stop wired into my um, uh, PLC. So at the moment I'm forcing it off. So because I'm forcing the e-stop off, it's not a real e-stop, it's just a button. Uh, but because I'm forcing it off, this e-stop circle here is flashing and it tells me when that happened. So 22, 18, three minutes ago. If I come back to tier and I go to my force table, I also actually at the bottom here, I've got a banner here that says active faults, e stop pressed. If I click acknowledge, nothing happens. If I click fault reset, nothing happens. We go back to tier and I stop forcing. Then that e stop event, fault reset, and now my e stop's gone. We'll come back to tier and then I force that back off. We'll get another pop up here. Boom. There we go. E stop triggered. Look at the animation. Beautiful. So here I've got a blue LED turning on and off. So as it turns on and off, I'm logging each change of event and that's been recorded. So it's from 22, 17, 17 minutes past 10 to 21 minutes past 10. And it's just turning on and off every 10 seconds. And yeah, so I mean, I can turn on and on the imp inputs and outputs. So I have, let's go to my watch table. So right now I'm forcing you stop off. I've got DQs here. So these are turning on and off, I believe. We should see this one turn on in the next 10 in the next 10 seconds yeah man hmm dq a0 why is that not the led is turning on off, isn't it so my dq is currently off i can see it's off ah ah it's because the e stops pressed <laughs> yeah okay so let's um let's just you see i'm not making this up stop forcing so the e stops healthy then we'll see the led turn on and off because I check my e stop before I turn on my outputs. So one of the outputs is true, DQ A3. This one should go true at some point. Yeah, man. Oh, it's like a 40 second loop, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So in five seconds or so, that should turn on. And do, do, do. there we go. So that's turned on my LED. And then what did I want to do? I've forgotten what I wanted to do now. Or reset. Oh yeah, okay. I can turn on this this DQ here. So this is DQ one. So DQ one is currently false. If I click run motor, that now becomes true. If I click it again, oops. If I click it again here, that becomes false. So I've got that on the toggle. Um, fault reset is just a. It sends it what as long as I hold it. So it's momentary. Momentary. And then the crazy thing is, as you saw, I can rearrange these grids, which is just insane. Like ah. Uh, I'm bug it's a bit buggy now, which is okay because I kind of expect it to be. Look at that, Ugh. beautiful. So let's let's move this up to the top. 
<laughs> oh, it's insane, man. And all of this, honestly. So, I mean, look at his Matrix logo. It's just bouncing and glowing. And then in the background, you've got Matrix, um, <clears throat> Matrix PLC base module. And it's just, it's got, it's scrolling through. So you can see here, look, I keep my mouse and it's moving. So I've got a background scrolling animation on there, which is just beautiful. Um, so let's now, if I go, I, I've got, I've made like um, a watch table IO list with all my IO. So if I click, oh, hey, I got this nice splash screen actually that I didn't show you. So if I click view all PLC tags, then now you can see I've got my HMI control buttons, analog inputs, digital IO. And so I can turn on my, so I can clear forcing and fault reset from here. And that, that sends the commands to the PLC. Then from here, I've got my analog values, which is my scaled value. I've got the raw values here. So you can see they're zero as soon as they pick up a bit of noise. So I think if I just run the mode, run the motor oh, i don't actually have the motor here at work i've got a motor connected um but i can add an offset so i can click here modify add an offset 88 now that becomes 88 volts i can have an another offset here 24 that becomes 24 if i come back to my dashboard here then on my analog input over here you can now see i've got my graph here absolutely beautiful and then i can go to scalar and I can adjust my scalar. So that will go. Um, let's make it 2.5. Is that, is that actually working? That 2.5 scalar. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's sca that's scaling my raw value, but my raw value is currently zero. Yeah, so that makes sense. But you can see here so that these values are written to the PLC. So if I go to the PLC and I go to do, 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 do let's go IO. And that deep there block there. CPU inputs analogs. So and I monitor that. And you can see I've got 88 scaled, uh 88 offset, scale of 2.5, 24, 2.5. That all of that works in absolute beauty. And then here's the crazy part. Now, if you don't know forcing, this is this will blow your mind. But essentially, the the program right now is running, and you know, I've if you remember, I toggled that that I clicked that run motor button back here. Um, this run motor, I to I've toggled it so that it's on. So currently, that imp that digital output, digital output one is on. If I go to view PLC tags, digital output one is on. I can the software, the PLC is telling it to turn on. I can force it off. And so even though now in the PLC, it's um, turned on, I am able to force it off. And then I've got this banner that pops up and bounces. I wasn't sure about the bounce, but I just thought it just created a bit of a comedic effect. But um, here it says forcing active. Some IO points are currently being forced. And so if I clear forcing, that banner goes away. And then the output... Um, then the, obviously if it's forced on or forced off then it would it, it would turn off yeah man it's just and look you got the, the background scrolling again to me it's just insane what i've been able to do in a week you know yeah it just imagine if this, if i did this for my job full time how good of a, this is one of the best hmis i've ever seen in my life and i did it in a week completely custom so I, i'll go through some of the back end with you um and let me just actually let me just show you like it's a it's an app like you know so here i'm on my desktop and matrix plc base module click it it's an app like it loads as an app i've built it as an app like um if i go let's go windows matrix plc base module it comes up as an app it says app if i go to i can uninstall it i can um let's go to add remove programs Let's do installation date. Matrix PLC base module 0 0.3.4, 750 meg. An app installed today. Like it's crazy. So if I go to my GitHub, again, I'm not going to share this. This is it's a private re repo, so you don't have access to it. But I can download the I, I download the exe and then I just install it. So I did download this e exe um, earlier. 
So you just literally just run the installation. This probably not is it gonna work because I think it's open. Yeah. Installing, please wait. It's got the matrix logo. It's just I can't believe that this is ah oh, I just bloody closed it. Anyways, yeah. And that's that's it. it. Installs like that, just like that. So now I've got the source code here, I've downloaded it already. Oh, well, I already had it. Um so if I let's go VS Code. So this is the source code here, and it is not a lot, right? It's it's I've got two JSON files, which you know that's just it's just I'm just defining stuff here. So I've got one JavaScript file, another JavaScript file. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight JavaScript files. Like that's crazy. It's eight files that runs this thing, and then I've got two HTMLs. I've got index.html and PLC details HTML. But these, this is two web pages, and that's it. Like, and two two CSS files to control the CSS of my um. It was my other one there. PLC details CSS. Yeah, and that's it. And I mean, if you don't, know, Electron doesn't work. Um, it's a bit difficult to get your head around. And up until like four days ago. I was kind of just using ChatGPT and using Claude and bringing in, pulling in open source libraries and I was struggling, but it was working. And then I just really got a hit, a hit brick wall and I had to actually like try and figure out what's actually happening. So the back end here, I'm using, I'm communicating via the PLC with Node 7, which is like an open source Python library that you just call, it's really easy to deal with. Um, you install and then you're like in your package, you just declare that you're using it. Where is it? Uh, do do nodes node seven. I've moved stuff around a lot. There's nodes. There, dependencies. So here, these are the these are the dependencies that I'm currently using right now. So in terms of libraries, open source libraries, I'm using Anime JS, Chart JS. So the Anime JS is so that I can do this really cool. Look at this this loading screen here. So I can do that loading screen. I'm using Anime JS. And I'm using chart JS for t these two charts. It's beautiful. Um, data tables. I'm not actually using it anymore. I could remove that. Um, I was using it for. I'll show you. Um, you know my um, my I/O screen. I was using it for that, but I ran into and it's just if you do this, just be aware. So I was using the data tables. It was an open source table, which was it was really good. You know, it, it had a search function. So imagine if you had a thousand I/O. This thing would search through the table and filter it and bring you the IO that you want, which would have been just as insane. Um, so um, yeah, uh, I'm not using that anymore. I've removed that because basically I couldn't get the buttons to work with it. That might be my own fault, just me not being clever. Um, but yeah, I've removed that. Um, and yeah, what else am I using? HTML to Canvas. Oh, I didn't even tell you this. So if I go back over to here, on my chart, here I can pause the chart, but I can print, man. <laughs> uh, so I can print to my home printer or I can print to PDF. So let's just print to PDF. And then let's just do test print. And where was it? Is it going to show? I don't know if it will show. Documents. Oh, it was there, yeah. Let's print. Open out. Yeah. And so look at this. <laughs> you know how much time I wanted, like when I was on Siemens trying to get this working. How do I rotate? Rotate right. That one. Rotate right. Yeah. So that that I can print that to my actual printer. And it just, it was just, it, it's, it's really clever what I've done here, actually. It took, took me, it was a pain in the backside. It took me two and a half hours to get this chart working this morning, printing it. But yeah, it's insane, man. Absolutely insane. So here, like the analog inputs, let them load again. Yeah, man. Where are they? Load up, you silly things. I can turn them on and off. Oh, I paused it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I can turn them on and off. Look. It's just, it's just beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. Love it. Anyways, so that's it for me. I just wanted to share what I've been up to and the fact that I guess you can call me a software developer now. Um, 
I'm probably I'm looking to probably ship this with some of the products I'm doing for Matrix. So that'll be interesting to see what it's like to actually have software out there in the world. I'm not sure I want to. I'm not sure I will, but you know, we'll see. It depends on um it's it's just easier for me. This this took me a week and I couldn't do this on a Siemens HMI, but I could do similar. I could do good enough in probably like four days, three days. So is it necessary to go to this level of beauty? I would say every comp for every for a company they should do. Every company should strive for something like this. This is flipping gorgeous. But is it necessary for me? Probably not. I could probably just stick to a Siemens HMI and um everyone would be happy with that anyways. But this is just for me, I wanted to see how good Electron is, and I would say it's flipping amazing. You know, if, to just design your own HMI like that, you know, it's just ah it's it's, a, it's beautiful man absolutely beautiful the code is just all just so simple anyways cool thanks for watching guys i shall see you in the next one take care bye bye